Welcome everybody and welcome to this, our fourth and final uh, webinar in our Project Elevate strength or, or length of uh, webinars that we've presented to you over the last four weeks. Um, once again, we have the privilege of having Greg Eckstein with us today to present this to you. Uh, and with no further ado, uh, ado, Greg, I'm going to hand it over to you and um, let's wow the folks. Okay, absolutely. Hi, everyone. Great to uh, speak with you again today. As Grant mentioned, this is the fourth and final of the Elevate series. Um, as a reminder, you can get recordings of webinars one, two, three, and four when we complete it today, which we're posting on our YouTube channel. So you can always come back, get references on each of these four webinars. For those of you that are new um, to this series and haven't met me yet, just very quickly, um, I'm based in Singapore. Um, I am a pretty much a career consultant uh, uh, working with Motorola uh, and many others, Motorola especially for the last 15 years, not only in Asia and in Australia extensively, but um, also across uh, the world. Um, the, uh, the, the, the objectives of the program is that we are trying to elevate your skill set to be ready for the future. Um, the future is a comms and IT solution that um, will need to be deployed, monitored, and supported by you going forward. And thereby, there is a fantastic uh, business opportunity for you if you can expand your skill set. So we have created this Elevate series, um, and we call them also kind of Tuesday trainings. We're trying to kind of sub-brand around a cadence where we're regularly um, um, enabling you and giving you the latest information so you can constantly uh, adapt and transform your business models, not only to remain relevant, but also to maximize your, your profitability. As, as some of you know, um, I was a dealer myself for six years running Asia. So it was always uh, interesting for me to hear best practices. So in this series, one of our objectives, as you can see there in the second bullet, is to give you industry best practices about what other dealers are doing, um, what does their strategies look like. So then you can think about your strategy and the market segments that you serve and design the right uh, uh, strategy to help you meet your objectives. Um, there is ongoing support should you need it. Um, it, it. You can reach me at any time through LinkedIn. Um, Grant obviously is the technical point of reference at ACE and um, um, you, you can also get uh, uh, references, everyone, from our YouTube channel. Um, please visit uh, youtube.com and then uh, type ACE Communications. You'll see the, uh, the ACE of Spades up there on the upper left-hand corner. You'll see that logo for our channel. And there are at least, I think, around 30 videos now. Um, go to the playlist, and that is your continuing education. So we've made a huge investment in time and effort to build that for you the last 12 months. So please use it, please bookmark it actually. So let's talk about the technology journey and what is causing um, the industry to change so rapidly and create these opportunities for you. For those of you that have been in radio for a while, it doesn't seem like very long ago, all we talked about was analog radio. And then around 2012, I think, is when we started talking about um, digital. And for those of you that work with Motorola and uh, um, um, and resell that product, you would have uh, known Turbo. Uh, they announced Turbo. Um, I was involved in that project, trying to help the dealers uh, uh, transform from uh, a, you know, an analog-based business to a digital-based uh, business. It took a long time. It took us at least four years. Um, and we did a lot of work in Australia for uh, the channel partners there. And, and some of you may have even been involved in those where we were helping the dealers to transform for digital and, and looking at all the opportunities that digital presents to you. Um, I can almost say the exact same thing about the cloud now. Uh, now we're talking about the cloud. Um, if you look at, and I'm just using Motorola's product line simply because they have the broadest uh, 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 line of products and technologies at this time compared to other brands. Now you're, you're aware that at ACE, we offer a broad range of, of brands. So I'm not uh, discriminating against any of those. I'm just using Motorola as an example because they did launch a product in the cloud called Wave. So, um, you know, th there, it's here. Um, it's it's, it's uh, being adopted 
um, end user customers are wanting to leverage the cloud um, for lots of different reasons. Um, we're seeing most of those cases being hybrid where they've still got their own premise uh, secure environment considered, uh, I guess the family jewels would be there. And then the cloud for, for other types of um, uh, compute and, and storage and other needs that they may have. So the cloud is here. This is the journey. Um, let's hope that there's not another column after cloud for a while so all of us can digest what's, what's, uh, what's available to us now. Um, today we're talking about transform and I mapped, as you can see, the, you know, the, the four webinar series to the movement from analog to digital to IP to cloud. So today we're talking about how can you be a transformational uh, 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 partner to your customers? So we're gonna give you a definition of what we think the skills and competencies and services would be for a transform partner. And that'll give you an opportunity to think about what do you currently offer now? And I want you, as we go through this, um, don't listen as much to what I'm saying, but you should be thinking more about who your customers are, okay? That should be at the center of your mind. We know that dealers sell to the same customers 88% of the time. And ask yourself, who do you constantly sell to? What environments are you in normally where you have differentiated value? And then apply what I'm saying around the capabilities that you could bring to your customers. To do that, you have to think about what do your customers need tomorrow? And I would encourage you to trigger those conversations. Um, as the world is kind of on a pause right now with this COVID thing, this is an opportunity, and especially for you in Australia, where you can get out and about and meet people again, um, unlike almost every other part of the world, take this opportunity. It's December, right? And we all know in Australia, um, the Australians take a lot of time off, um, you know, at Christmas time and the first half of January. So this is the time to have coffee meetings or have a drink or have lunch with your top customers and, and talk with them about their future needs. Then you take what I'm saying and start to apply that because ultimately I don't want you to do what I'm saying for the sake of doing it. I want you to consider what I'm saying and how your customers that you serve would need the cloud, for example, going forward. Now, last week we talked about optimize and optimize everyone if you were not on that particular webinar was about having the capabilities to optimize an environment where the radios or comms that you have sold reside. As you would all know, that is intersecting with IT networking. So your comms skills are now being stretched. Um, you're gonna need to be able to take on more IT networking skills in order to optimize the environment where your solution sits. Today, we're talking about transform. Now with transform, we're going out of the environment and we're going company-wide. So this is a macro level engagement now. We recognize that almost all of you will not ever achieve the status of a transformational um, comms and IT provider, uh, but it's important that we set this lighthouse, so to speak, uh, off into the distance for you. So it is a guiding light for you for where you should be evolving your comms and IT skills going forward to take advantage of a fantastic opportunity inside your customers. Now it must be said, and this isn't meant to sound like a threat or anything like that, but it must be said that your customers will need these services. They will need somebody that understands comms and understands IT, and they're gonna need some product or service or tire, uh, wireless technology potentially that's cloud-based in the future to support their business unit needs. If you don't make the move now and develop those capabilities, it is possible that the IT service provider inside your company who's mainly focused on IT and not comms could take over that space. So we want you, and that's why this series is so important to us, 
is we want to get all that information out to you and put this lighthouse of, of what is transform uh, um, out for you today. So when we talk about transformation, everyone, um, we're talking really about now we're out of the comms and not specifically talking about comms anymore. We're talking about the digital transformation of the clients that you're serving. Your clients uh, will be impacted by the cloud. Um, they will have an IT backbone that is designed to drive business outcomes. Not, it is no longer used for convenience and storage and sharing and collaborating. The IT is now a 35 year old industry. It's mature. Companies used to buy it to automate things and increase productivity, but now they use, uh, your customers are using IT to drive a business outcome. It's connected to a business unit. It facilitates the way that they do business with their customers. So when we talk about transform, your skill set would be one in the future if you were to achieve this level of expertise where you would be able to have serious conversations, be influential at the, 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 the senior executive management table talking about the IT digital transformation needs of the company. And of course, your comms would reside in there, okay? Now, to do this, everyone, um, you, as I mentioned last week, you can either develop these capabilities in-house and hire people, or you can be introduced, and we can help you do this, to a third party um, who can be your IT uh, solution provider. Again, you own the relationship with the end user, you are the prime, but you can offer a broader range of products and services and technologies. So you do the invoicing, but in the background, you can leverage a third party to do the IT side. Either you can always do that and let them drive that for you and you make a margin on it, or you could use that situation to mentor someone on your team to build up the skills so that over time, then you, you can do all that in-house. But it's important that you think about that. You need to have a plan for how you're going to address the increasing IT, general IT needs, networking needs, et cetera, and cloud needs of your customers because it is absolutely um, here and it's not going away. Finally today, I'd just like to recap on some of the, the important topics that we talked about over this four webinar series, such as social selling. So I'll talk about that and, and the importance of marketing yourself right now during this period when really the, um, all the, the, the chairs on the deck have been reshuffled globally. Um, now is that you have an opportunity to redefine who you are. And um, it, I, I'm, I'm strongly encouraging you to embrace this and build this piece of your business strategy because it can pay huge dividends for you going forward. Also, if you think about it, if you, you, you go on the journey that you're seeing here on this slide and you're going from where you are today, maybe an adopt partner and you're moving in to being able to optimize the environment where the comms and IT are, are sitting um, and, and ultimately you wanna go to transform, you need a way to tell your customers that you're on that journey. So the digital marketing side, the social selling, all of that is very important. Um, you can become a transform partner, but if nobody knows it, then you know, you, congratulations on the achievement, but there's still some work to do to, now you gotta let people know one way or the other. Um, uh, EDMs don't work. So um, people um, would, would, you know, uh, unless it's a uh, very important uh, subject or something, they, you're not gonna get a lot of eyeballs on your EDMs. You're gonna have to think about different ways of communicating. And uh, so I wanna review that today. And I wanna just review with you the importance of video. Uh, everybody likes a 30 second video. Uh, you can get a lot of information across in a very short period of time, and it can be very cost effective. So here we're moving into the upper right-hand corner of the quadrant, true partnerships, um, thought leaders, uh, and again, a seat at the executive management table. Again, I'll use Motorola as an example, um, only because Motorola uh, has um, you know, really accelerated their acquisition to redefine what is a wireless communications solution. Um, and they have gone out and started acquiring companies and you can tell they've redefined what it is and it's broader, bigger, wider, 
than we all had ever thought two or three years ago. So this is what's driving it. And this is a, 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 on this slide, you should just see dollar signs. Um, all of these technologies are opportunities for you. And when you look at our Intel line, if you look at our Samoco line, uh, they will be doing the same thing, just simply not as fast as you can see as Motorola. Motorola is a larger company, have access to more capital. So they're, they're doing this, but you can be sure that Samoco, um, Kenwood, uh, uh, Intel, um, and, and others are, are out there building out their, their technologies and trying to uh, broaden the definition of the solution. Okay, so today, far right hand uh, uh, side column of the slide, the definition, what is the definition of transform, Greg? So you can see at the top, this is a very important phrase. Um, it does not say system integrator. It says strategic technology integrator. So that is more than a system integrator. And, and this is again, at a very macro level, at the highest levels of the customers you serve, being very confident and having the competencies to talk about their digital transformation, how they leverage IT and communications to achieve what they want to achieve. So um, you can see it, uh, infrastructure as a service. So look at it, maybe, um, you know, something like Azure or, uh, you know, Google Cloud or uh, AWS um, would be there in the middle. And then of course, end-to-end -end management, uh, proactive management, uh, proactive monitoring um, of on-premise technologies and having the ability to do so remotely and uh, really create almost a dashboard of your customer's IT and comms environment. Um, the range of services that you would be offering. So you can see how we've kind of built this out, right? This is a great slide. Um, this is definitely a slide that you should have um, either in your mind or hanging in your office about your journey in terms of your, your comms and IT offerings and skill sets and competencies. So you can see now in the lower right-hand corner, um, we've extended out into what we call client strategic services. And this everyone, um, while there is technology uh, phrases written on this slide and IT phrases written on this slide, um, what I would like to point out about this slide, especially for transform and optimize is that having these capabilities gives you the ability to create an annuity based uh, services uh, uh, revenue stream. And this is very, very important because it can move you away from running a business that is project-based and very lumpy. You've got money, then you don't have any money. You got money, you don't have money. We've all been through that. By building out your services capabilities and extending further into IT, these are annuity streams of revenue. So instead of it being lumpy like this, it's, it starts to get flat. It's much flatter, okay? When it's much flatter, then it really helps you with your operating capital and um, your, your cash flow. So this is what um, I want you to see when you see this slide. I want you to see annuity-based revenue streams for service level agreements that you can sell to your customers. They need them. Um, and all you need to do is have the capabilities to deliver those, then you need to make sure your salespeople can sell them. You need to change the commission plan to do so, and you can get this going. Now is the time, everyone. Um, in, in you know, with January, you have a good reason why to change your pricing policy and every other policy that you want to change. But now is the time to start launching and building your annuity-based revenue streams based on the services that you can provide across the comms and IT. Now, I'll just pause there um, and give my good friend Grant an opportunity if you'd like to uh, add anything, Grant, to what I've said. Absolutely, Greg. And guys, remember now, <clears throat> moving into the future, we have access to the Cambium product. Now, Cambium's got some really exciting stuff coming and you guys will start leveraging um, the ability to, to use your your relationships with your customers to leverage this Cambium equipment, whether it be a Wi-Fi solution, whether it be point-to-point -point solutions, whether it be meshed solutions, um, you guys can diversify your own businesses. And by doing that, you would get into the situation where you could manage their networks for them. 
Um, so this is this whole IT network backbone that we're getting into. So the product is there, the, the expertise is there, the product is evolving. Um, we've got some exciting, really high speed products, um, fiber optic replacement product, um, which is shipping right now. Um, it's brand spanking new um, and talk to me. If you want more information on it, let's chat. Um, and this is an ideal opportunity to start getting yourselves into this environment where you are not just selling a two-way radio anymore, you're selling the whole solution to your customers. So remember in the old days, we had to go and touch every single radio to program them or keep them up to date. Nowadays, we can do that via um, remote programming. So over the air programming. And remember, if we're gonna leverage the Wi-Fi functionality of the Motorola radio, which is unique. So none of the other manufacturers have got a Wi-Fi function in their two-way radios. If we leverage the Wi-Fi functionality in the radios and with 10.10, um, .10, we can actually turn that Wi-Fi on the radio on and off remotely as well. So that radio is not sitting in Wi-Fi mode, continuously sucking power out of the battery. In a portable's case, we turn it on when we need it. So if you wanted to update programming or update code plugs or even update firmware, you don't have to do it over the air on the air interface anymore. We could do it via Wi-Fi. To do that via Wi-Fi, you need to have reasonable Wi-Fi hotspots established around your customer's premises. That's where Cambium comes into play. So we start now leveraging the Cambium equipment with the Motorola equipment, create Wi-Fi hotspots for your bigger customers. And we can then manage their code plugs, which you guys can do remotely. Once again, a charged service if you wanted to, and manage that entire network um, without interfering and, and impacting their communications in any way, all right? purely by using the Wi-Fi and the radios. Um, as I said, the Motorola radio is unique in the fact that it's got Wi-Fi in it. And because it's got Wi-Fi functionality, we can also now leverage that Wi-Fi functionality and put it into a wave environment. So suddenly your guys are carrying their portable radios on site. When they leave site, they keep that portable radio. When they're sitting at home and they've got their own Wi-Fi sitting at home, they can actually be back on their radio network sitting at the office as if they are still at the office. All right, so this is the type of functionality that's in play right now, guys. It's available, it's shipping, it's working. Talk to me. There's some exciting stuff out there. So your involvement and moving into this, this whole transformation is not pie in the sky. It's happening right now, and you guys can leverage this. All right, it's not going to be coming. It's here. All right, you need to talk to me. Absolutely. And I would just like to add one thing to what Grant just said so eloquently is that it's also not as hard as you think. Um, Definitely and not. It, and, and it worked, as Grant said, it actually, it's, it's not coming, it's here and it works. And it is surprisingly easy, uh, easier uh, than you might think to develop those skills and capabilities. And I would encourage you to embrace being a little bit uncomfortable for the sake of transforming your company and moving it forward. It's just like anything else. Once you get in there and you get banged around a little bit and you figure it out, uh, 10 days later, um, it's not hard anymore. And, uh, and I encourage you to just do that every 10 days and keep extending. Sorry, Grant, go ahead. And I think I alluded to this in last week's seminar. Uh, and you guys must remember this. With the new modern radio systems, you gain to be interfacing more and more with the IT departments of your customers. Mm -hmm. Once you get into the IT departments and you start levering the, leveraging this information about giving them high-speed links, high-speed switching, high-speed um, Wi-Fi functionality within their environments, suddenly you're talking a different language and they become excited. And they don't just look at this as a two-way radio system anymore. They're now looking at an overall picture of their entire environment. And suddenly the two-way radio just becomes a part of it. And if you as a company can build this entire network for them, the two-way radio becomes secondary. And suddenly they're finding money to spend on a two-way radio that they didn't have before you started speaking to them about augmenting their entire IT network, all right? And it takes on a different picture 
of how you're presenting and talking to your customers and who you're actually talking to within the environment there, All right? So start using this knowledge to give your customers the ability to grow their businesses, not just using two-way radios as a tool, okay? Mm -hmm. Great point. Excellent. Let's, let's go through our methodology now um, to look at what does a transform company look like? Now, if you recall from previous webinars, the first slide is what do they look like? The next slide will be how do you make money in a transform model? Next slide is what are the pros? Next slide, what are the cons? Next slide, um, what would uh, uh, ACE, uh, what, no, what, what would the engagement look like? And finally, sixth point is what would uh, ACE uh, want you to achieve or uh, leverage from ACE in order to do that? So let's start with the first dimension. What do they look like? Um, a transform dealer would have a technical team that either has the capabilities, or as you can see in yellow at the top, or you have partnered with, as I mentioned earlier, a third party um, whose team has the ability to do industry, has industry management um, experience constructing and executing technical strategies for digital transformation. Now that is a mouthful. I know, remember I said, this is not, you should not expect to be what I'm describing today uh, by January. This is your, your, your destination. We're putting the, the lighthouse out there for you. So that first point, I know that's heavy. Technical strategies, executed technical strategies related to transforming businesses. All of you are radio uh, dealers, so I know that's a stretch, but just digest it. And, and as I mentioned, as Grant mentioned, be open-minded to it and realize that it's not as difficult as some of these words may sound. Um, the, the, this, this type of a company would have industry IT management and IT project portfolio delivery capabilities. So again, this would might be something that either you hire and that's how you bring these capabilities into your company um, or you partner with another organization who, who can do this. And again, either, either maintain that marriage forever and you focus on the comm side, let the, the IT people focus on what they know. We prime everything under you, you own the relationship, or you can use that third party partnership as a mentorship, okay? Um, a technical team that would have the appropriate certifications, right, across a broad range of skills. So that would be Microsoft certifications, Cisco certifications related to networking. So again, fairly deep IT based uh, skill set. Um, a, a, I think that this type of a company, last week we talked about an operating system. Now, um, the reason that I believe a company-wide operating system is important is because of the rapid change that I see impacting all of us. The operating system that we run our companies on is designed to be a flexible foundation that gives us the ability to adapt our business. Our, the, our commission plans for the salespeople to get them to do what we want them to do. So that's what this fourth point about is about in terms of a structured company management system, okay? Allows for continual evolvement. And if you are rigid in the way that you're running your business now, you are gonna have challenges going forward because none of us can slow down the rate of change that is occurring. And I think that COVID has accelerated a lot of these things. If you heard what Grant just said, you know, Grant said that the person can go home with the radio, connect the radio onto their Wi-Fi router at their house and essentially be in the office. Um, that also means that they never ever have to go to the office. They can work from home. So all of these dynamics um, will definitely be causing your company to have to change the way you do this or you do that. Um, I think I've said enough about project management. And then the, the other thing that I wanna bring up is cybersecurity, the last bullet point here. So key risk management policies and procedures. So that would be related to the protection of data, also the protection of your data and, and um, the solutions that you deploy and being able to manage that risk uh, and do so on behalf of your customers from a proactive uh, uh, remote monitoring type perspective. Now, how would you make money? 
So these are, let's see, I've got six. <laughs> uh, these are just the top six. So there's a lot more than six. But um, anyway, I, I think the, the biggest way that you make money is by the, the trust that you build up with your customer. And that doesn't uh, translate to an Australian dollar. It translates to uh, an Australian, a, a multi-year, many thousands, if not million dollar opportunity for your company uh, because you're a trusted uh, business advisor um, to your customers. So that trust by having those capabilities is a long-term insurance policy um, that you have with almost every single one of your clients because it can be different. You can differentiate yourself right now by having these capabilities. Okay. A lot of people aren't moving there. That's why you're joining this webinar today. And some people aren't. It's because everyone on this call today is keen to be the first one out there and, and be able to look around the corner and provide what is needed based on industry best practices. Um, how else can you make money? Um, investigative and reporting of IT uh, infrastructure performance, uh, uh, emerging threats, um, investments that may need to be made in cybersecurity, et cetera. So there's certainly a, a massive opportunity there to be prescriptive about the IT roadmap that your customers would want to go on. Um, integrated and innovative solutions. So as Grant just mentioned, it is not coming, it is here. There are innovative uh, uh, um, uh, approaches and technologies to problems that have always existed. And um, again, it's not hard uh, to learn, it's just different. And, and you, now is the time when the world is paused to, to learn all these things and really uh, a focus on that. And because you'll come out better um, once we get this world going again, and um, we're all hoping that that happens by mid uh, 2021. So you've got seven months right now to really move hard and fast in terms of expanding your capabilities and really thinking hard about the competencies of your team that will be required uh, going forward based on the customers or market segments that you serve. Um, implementation, uh, obviously that's a, an opportunity, but I think uh, number five is the most important is the reoccurring revenue opportunity. And without me reading all these, um, they, there are numerous reoccurring revenue opportunities and you, you, you cannot underestimate the impact that a reoccurring uh, uh, annuity based service level agreements contracts that you can have with your customers, um, not only does it dramatically increase the valuation of your company for which many of you are the owner, um, but it also creates an, a, a smoother revenue stream. It COVID proofs your business should this thing come back again. Um, it takes the lumpy project nature of your cash flow uh, away. So there are just so many reasons why on this fifth bullet that um, you should really be looking into this. And as Grant mentioned, please feel free to contact Grant. Some of you are contacting me, uh, which is absolutely fine as well. And we can help talk you through this. So guys, right. let's look at that point, that recurring revenue services. If you grabbed a couple of your dealers and they, your, your clients, and they jumped onto a wave solution, so using the existing two way radios and they tossed that into a wave environment. Um, they're not spending any money on, on hardware, but you could be earning $15 per PDT on that wave. That's already recurring revenue. You know, you get, you get a hundred of those as a recurring revenue and you've, you've got your customer, no cash outlay for new product. And suddenly you earning yourself $1,500 a month as recurring revenue. Hey, multiply that by 10 folks and you've covered your wage bill for the month. All right. And you haven't had Thank to you. sell a single thing for the whole month. So that's where this recurring revenue starts becoming an impact. All right. So you've sold the unit, you've made the money out of the unit, but in the traditional radio terms, unless you're on a, on a rental scheme with your customer, you're not generating revenue out of that radio. Now I'm giving the opportunity to generate revenue out of that radio. And all they're doing is they're implementing a license key um, to enable them to use that radio remotely back into their radio systems. So that's a quick way to generate revenue on it. 
Absolutely. Um, everyone, when you get to a reoccurring revenue model in your business, the priority becomes retention, okay? So in the past, um, it's selling the next project or finding the next project. As you transform your business to a reoccurring revenue model, all of your engagement, all of your focus is around ensuring retention and renewal, okay? Um, and that's, in my book, it's a lot easier to do that than it is to go start, find, sell a brand new project, right? Um, it's always better to get people signed up, uh, get that re recurring revenue going and, and stay engaged, okay? And last point, I would like to, to, to uh, uh, really call out the fact that as you evolve your capabilities, um, you can see my last sentence there, the sale of your proprietary services. So your team is going to develop service capabilities that are gonna be proprietary to you. Those can be productized. Those can be uh, charged on a reoccurring revenue basis, not a project base. You don't fall into that trap. Uh, don't do something for a fee. You do something on an ongoing basis. So the proprietary services that you uh, uh, are building, figure out a way to make that on a reoccurring revenue basis where you're on a constant touch points with your customers and constantly bringing value. And as you constantly bring value, your retention and your renewal is easier. Okay, so that's what I meant earlier when I said you may have to change your engagement. Um, your engagement goes to always making sure that when you talk to them on the phone, when you are inside their office, that you're bringing value so that um, when it comes time for renewal, if it is a 12 month contract or whatever, that they renew. Okay, pros, um, you can imagine. There's all kinds of pros. So I've just picked four of them. Again, I go back to trust. I think trust between you and your customers, I think that is paramount. And um, you know, by having differentiated capabilities that creates trust. Um, trust leads to longer term business opportunities. Um, secondly, becoming a part of the management team and decision making process. Um, you are, again, differentiating yourself um, you're being seen to bring more value. That's a huge pro. Um, broader capabilities, um, you know, to deploy not only to your existing, but also to, to future clients. That is, um, um, it's, it's a necessary that, that you broaden your skill set, both from a service perspective and knowledge deployment and support of new product and technologies, wireless technology uh, uh, capabilities. You'll notice I'm saying, wireless communications technologies. I'm not necessarily saying radio because I, I want you to, to, to see that there are things that are complementary and integrated to the radio where you can make just as much or more money. And then another huge pro is the fixed price subscription model, um, which, which leads to peace of mind. And I believe that's something all of us could use a big dose of right now. So um, those are my, my biggest pros. Um, the cons, um, it, it must be said, that there is risk involved with managing another party's corporate data and security. Uh, that can be addressed though, through commercial agreements and contracts that you would have. And this is also why I've mentioned twice already today, and I'm not trying to sell you on it, but I really want you to examine something maybe you haven't thought about before, is that if you use a third party uh, to deliver certain aspects of your IT, you can, um, you can um, put that, that legal uh, uh, risk off to another party um, by using you know, the agreements that you have between those two parties and, and let them manage that risk, especially early on if, if you've never done this before. And then I think you know, to, you, the second point could be a pro, but I, I knew that if I only listed one con, you may not believe me. So I had to come up with at least two cons. So I said, well, there's a learning curve. And uh, I guess that could be a con because you have to take time away from doing other things uh, that you could be doing to, you have to take one step back to take two steps forward. So um, it's barely a con, but we'll call it one. Okay, um, sorry, I've got a typo here. Um, so what would ACE like its partners uh, to be able uh, to achieve. And um, I think quite simply, they're looking for you to have the ability to deliver business outcomes for your customers. 
right? To be able to sell um, the full line of, of products and brands that ACE offers, be able to inter integrate all those, be able to sell through the investments that we make in technologies to your customers that you serve. Now that is one reason why we are investing in uh, the Tuesday training series is because we wanna give you the capabilities to sell a broader range of products and services. And if you're able to do that, it helps the customers you serve, um, it helps your business, it helps ACE. So it's win, win, win. Um, number three, I think that uh, multi-partner ecosystems, I think, and I see those a lot in the IT industry, they work and they can drive comprehensive outcomes from the, your customers. So, um, and, and finally, I think just maximizing your relevancy in communications and IT, um, what I think that leads to is just a much, much healthier business uh, for you and, and the customers that you're serving. So I think that's what ACE would like um, its dealers to, to, to achieve. Um, what would your customers experience? Um, I, I think that they would experience a better comms and IT solution at a cheaper price, potentially. Um, if you're able to optimize it to the point where you can leverage the available technologies and provide remote monitoring and oversight um, technical services, um, and doing all this on a subscription basis, leveraging the cloud, uh, you can essentially really help your customer from a, 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 a technology value perspective and also a commercial perspective. Um, I think that your customers would experience, you know, up-to-date technologies and solutions to the problems and challenges that they have. I think that, um, you know, it gives them one throat to choke, as we say. Um, having a single provider for comms and IT and having only one party to contact to resolve a broad range of issues, that is big value, okay? Um, I, I think that finally it eliminates surprises. Um, if you've got a modern solution in there and it's monitored and, um, and, 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 and it has the expertise technically behind it from an IT and comms perspective, it eliminates any surprises that um, the end user may experience and any surprises that you might experience as well. So I think those are all very, very important features that your customers would benefit from and, and get value from. So let's do our first poll. And I'd like to ask you, based on the definition of transform that I've just taken you through, are you or your company currently proposing, implementing, and supporting this type of a IT comms solution? So if you could give us your feedback on that. Um, just trying to check now how many people that we have um, that are non-ACE on this call and when to stop this. If I could get one more response, I think that'd be great. Thank you very much. It looks like it's approximately 50-50. Some of you have progressed to this, this state and I think that's fantastic. So, and, and I hope that, uh, you know, uh, the way I'm describing it is what you're experiencing. Uh, the, the way people define what is a transformational dealer look like and what capabilities they have may be different than what you've designed. And that's very possible because you would design that based on the customers that you serve. For those of you that haven't reached that point yet, um, we didn't expect you to reach that point. And we're surprised actually that some of you have, and that's fantastic. Uh, but that's the purpose of the series is to help give you that roadmap. Go ahead, Grant. Craig, I think at this point, let me just um, answer the one question that's been raised to date. Um, thank you, Mark. Um, so Mark's asking the question is the recurring revenue, the renewal process can be very time consuming. So the money you make is really lost in the maintenance. Um, do we have an automated process that can handle this um, recurring revenue billing um, like the telcos have? So the short answer to that question is with our accounting package that we run, we run gym two at ACE. Um, the answer is yes, I can set up a recurring 
um, billing which which goes automatically. However, your initial input into that still needs to be manually done. At this point in time, there's no tie-in between the supplier um, at this point, Wave PDX or Two Air or ourselves, for that matter, um, to your accounting patches to to generate that automatically. So yes, there is a manual input to initially manage this ongoing revenues or this ongoing invoicing. But your accounting packages generally can handle um, an ongoing monthly revenue um, stream or a run of, of invoices. Um, now that you would need to investigate on the packages that you guys are running. But on top of this, please don't forget, um, and a lot of you are, are not renewing these, um, the Turbonet Plus or the Turbonet and Smart PDT subscriptions to keep those current after the first 12 months. I really think you should look at trying to absorb the cost of those recurring revenues into a maintenance contract with those customers that have that um, type of solution installed is to have an ongoing maintenance contract with these folks, which is either renewable yearly or renewable on a monthly um, ongoing basis. And once again, that would introduce a re, uh, an ongoing revenue stream coming into your business. But a lot of these Turbonet Plus smart PDT solutions are not being renewed after the first 12 months. And what's happening is comes a catastrophic failure of a solution or a system and suddenly we need to update firmwares on that solution. This thing stops working and astronomical amounts of money have to change hands to get them back up to the current firmware levels for the new firmwares in, in the repaired piece of equipment um, to come back to the fore. So you really need to consider how you manage these in the long run and it is a part of your business. Um, yes, there is an expense to your business to make these ongoing maintenance contracts a part of the business, but once they're in place, they should actually run themselves if your accounting package is designed and engineered to handle them. So that's maybe something you need to look at as well. I don't know if you can pass comment on that, Greg, but uh, I think a lot of these modern accounting packages that are in, in at the moment have the ability to do this recurring revenues because of how business is changing. That's exactly right. And it's all market driven. So Grant, everything you said is absolutely accurate. Um, and everyone there are, and you, you may have to look around at different accounting packages, uh, maybe companies that you've never heard of before, because all of these things that are happening are market driven. So because the end user clients are wanting to consume technology on a variable cost basis, um, it causes the people to provide that are providing that to engage commercially differently. And therefore it's caused a new set of commercial, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a new set of, of kind of cloud-based uh, accounting software companies to emerge where they can give you those abilities to automate the renewals process. So that is definitely out there. I'd like to just add one more thing to that um, which Grant kind of um, uh, articulated early in his piece is that you're going to need to change and look at your commercial agreements that you have written um, with your end user customers. Okay, so there's an opportunity to, to change the legal kind of engagement agreement. Um, I think right now is a perfect time to do that because everything's gonna go quiet in Australia from December you know, 20 or 22, you know, through January 15, there's an opportunity for you while it's quiet to really rethink that and look at that piece and upgrade those agreements and change the commission plans of the salespeople to drive that behavior. I'll just pause there, Grant, in case you'd like to make some final comments. Oh, Greg, I think that's all being said. Um, folks, you know, I think what we're alluding to in this whole four week period is that the way we all do business is really, really changing. Um, so we really need to consider how we're doing that. And with a lot of the stuff going cloud-based, um, that's the way of the future. Yeah, and that's a perfect segue, everyone, into this final section here of today's uh, Tuesday training is that I wanted to come back to a couple of important points that we've talked about 
over the last four weeks and just give you kind of a reminder of some of the high points and other things that we've said. One was around social selling. And um, uh, I see uh, Nick is, is on the, uh, the, the webinar today and good to see you, Nick. Uh, Nick is, is very good at this. And um, some people have uh, really been able to embrace this and leverage it. And other uh, of us are, are, uh, have been doing it and trying to improve every day. Um, my, my company, we engaged an outside firm who specializes in social selling. Again, it's a brand new company that didn't exist a very short time ago um, in Singapore, and they are experts at building social selling strategy. We were fortunate enough to start this two months before COVID, and uh, it has dramatically changed um, the brand awareness of who we are and what we do so social selling, everyone, um, is important. I know that certain state borders are opening. Um, I just spoke with a, uh, a, a business school friend of mine in Melbourne earlier today. Um, he told me, yep, um, they're moving around and working, doing, you know, having coffees and engaging mostly the way they used to, but people still aren't flying around. So um, you know, if you're a national business, you're gonna need to leverage things like digital marketing, modern digital marketing strategies specifically social selling to build your brand and share valuable information and get your point of view out there and uh, be seen to be a thought leader. Um, all this in addition to delivering a modern IT and comms solution is a, a, a monumental competitive advantage that you can build over the next three to four months. Um, it is not hard I can assure you, and I'd be more than happy to talk with any of you about, um, you know, and, and I've shown you my account in webinar number one for social selling. So very happy to continue to support you in this regard. So this was an important point. A couple of, you can see, um, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. Social selling is about building that network. So make sure you define what is your world and get connected to that world. Second point, engage, uh, um, uh, share valuable information, be an influencer, um, and, and you have an opportunity to do that right now. And then finally, don't, you know, just write stuff and uh, uh, post articles from, you know, uh, the newspapers in Australia or, you know, uh, periodicals in Australia, but, you know, use video, um, uh, be, be different, show your personality and, uh, and stick with it. And over time, everyone, you will start to get the traction that I'm referring to. Um, another point that I would like to make is I just wanna motivate you. Um, and if you can't feel it already in my voice and Grant's voice, uh, you know, the, the um, motivation and excitement that we're trying to bring to you to embrace this opportunity. So please, um, you know, as a result of today's final uh, Tuesday training for 2020, um, um, take this opportunity now over the next three or four weeks to implement many of the things that we've talked to you about. As you can see on this slide, learn some new tricks, um, encourage uh, um, your, your, your colleagues to adapt and change, stay positive. Uh, I know that um, this, uh, the protracted nature of what's happening right now is starting to take its toll on many people. So stay active, stay positive, stay healthy and encourage and embrace new ideas and ways of doing things. Guys, don't be scared to learn. Learn something new every day, okay? I think we all do. We all need to keep learning. And I promise you in this new world, we are all learning. So That's keep right. learning. Keep learning. That is We're in thing. this together. Yep. And if Us we older folks battle, but we're learning. <laughs> That's right. And if we're, if we're not learning, I think we're going backwards. Um, and that's kind of the nature of the way the world is. And I think I mentioned in webinar number two, I've been in the IT industry uh, almost uh, you know, 30 years now. And um, I thought that I was used to change and I thought I was used to the pace of change living in Singapore for 27 years. For those of you that have been to Singapore, we constantly change. They change everything about our life every month. Uh, but I am challenged to keep up with the change of the last uh, uh, nine months or so. And, as I said, COVID has accelerated some of this IT and comms changes that are occurring. So, uh, guys, there's the, some the, big change coming. So keep watching us, please. There's big changes coming. Keep with us. That's right. Stick to us. 
So um, mental exercise, everyone. Think about as a result of these four Tuesday trainings, think about this is the time to do it. Think about your short and long-term goals. Okay, what do you wanna achieve by December 31? Now, by December 31, that's not gonna be probably a financial figure. It would be more like making uh, a decision that we want to have a certain business model in place by March 31. We, with that may be the achievement that you're making. You're having a meeting internally and you're consciously deciding to move the company forward. And then the execution of that and the financial results wouldn't occur until maybe March 31 or June 31. But again, think about your long and short-term goals. What investments do you need to make? In terms of investments, everyone, I really don't think it's a tremendous amount of money. Um, I, I think that the investments that you need to make are mostly in your time and your uh, fortitude to embrace change. Um, if you leverage an ecosystem partnership third party, you don't even have to hire anyone. Um, you're simply bringing in another party to deliver a service that you're not comfortable to deliver yet. You're not gonna lose any money on it and it doesn't cost you anything. Um, you'll simply get a commission on the piece that they deliver for you and it will be your time that you will invest to learn what they're doing, try to get your skills up to speed and as Grunt has so graciously offered the last four weeks, think about what you need from ACE. Feel free to contact Grunt. Uh, feel free to contact myself, Jason Jasky, Kevin Kyler, any of us, should you need uh, someone to talk to on a broad range of topics or subjects, whether it be technical and Grunt, whether it be kind of business uh, transformation from me, whether it's marketing and sales related to Jason or Katie, um, all of us have a role to play and all of us are really here to support you. So in closing, um, again, just wanted to remind you, here's that right-hand column. That's what today was about. Here's the range of services that you would be able to deliver. Um, we will make these slides available for you. And um, my poll, uh, I think this may be the last poll of the uh, series in 2020, is has this series helped you uh, aided your business strategy going forward. And uh, I can see from my platform, this is the last poll today. So uh, if you could let us know if this series has helped you because we are planning on continuing Tuesday training in 2021. And um, we are gonna shift gears from what I've been talking about the last uh, um, four weeks really related to kind of business and IT transformation and broadening the solution and technologies that you're capable of supporting. In January, Grant's gonna take the lead on, on Tuesday training and get and talk to you about some products and, and update you on Intel, uh, broad range of products that we've uh, launched and partnered with, very, very exciting stuff. Um, Cambian and sharing with you new capabilities. We wanna educate you on that. So we're, we're going to actually touch some hardware and software in January and, and, and keep the Tuesday training fresh and new for you. So um, thank you very much. These are great results. We're very happy. Appreciate the feedback. It looks like our, our efforts are, are uh, spot on and having the desired impact. So we'll definitely continue with our training. Now, remember everyone, I uh, wanted to remind you last year, we invested in building our YouTube channel. Um, remember, with the launch of Ace of Spades, enablement for our dealers is a top priority. So we have a fantastic range of, of education for you now. It could be on demand by leveraging our YouTube channel, or we're now doing it basically on demand with Tuesday trainings, and we're going to continue to build these for you. Um, in closing, Grant, if you don't mind, I'll just do uh, two more slides. Absolutely. And, Keep going. and pass, it, pass it over to you for final comments. Uh, maybe Kevin's on. I can't see the attendees. It's possible Kevin is also on and he may want to say something. But quick reminder about the body-worn cameras. This was a special announcement last Tuesday. Um, we're, the, it's here, as Grant said. It's not coming. It's here. Um, contact us for more information if you're, you're not aware of it. I'm not sure if we've done a video on it yet on the ACE YouTube channel, but um, if we haven't, it's probably coming. It could also be there as well, just because we've been doing so many things lately. Um, and Empower, uh, I'd like to call out for Empower. There's triple points available, everyone, until December 18 for the following series that you can see, the 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 
um, whoops, uh, uh, TLK uh, 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 and EX series. And with that, I will pass it over to Grant and team. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for your time once again. It's been very insightful. And um, I think over the last four weeks, you've really given us a lot of school for thought. Um, and guys, once again, um, you know, we are here to service you, you, you folks. Um, if you don't keep talking to us and don't keep asking us, we are not going to strive to give you more. Um, we are increasing our portfolio all the time with the view to give you an absolute one-stop shop for communications from A to B. Um, we will really want to get across the board on all of this from the radio side, the power side, the linking side, um, the Wi-Fi side, the integration side. Um, so the more we can get information from you as to what you require, um, the easier it's going to be for us to, to leverage the types of equipment and the types of of solutions we need to head towards. Now, you may have a solution that I haven't considered yet. I'm not going to consider that unless you bring it to me. So the quicker and, and, and the quicker you get it to me, the easier you get it to me, um, the more we're going to be able to leverage that um, for the, the ongoing foreseeable futures. All right, so keep talking to us. Please bring those bigger solutions that you're scared of to us. Um, don't be shy. Don't be scared. Um, they are not bigger than Ben Hur. We'll we'll tackle them together, and um, you'll be surprised how easy it is to get there. All right. Um, if there's no further questions, I'm not seeing any other questions coming up. Um, I hope that you've you've really benefited benefited from this these these four sessions. And as Greg's alluded, we will keep going in the new year. Um, I'll start presenting to you guys some of the newer product. Um, there is some very exciting stuff coming in the wings. Um, I've alluded to that. And as we are able to and um, it lands, we will start presenting all of that to you and keep going with it. Um, Kev, I don't know if you want to add anything to this um, and, and have a chat to the folks. But uh, yeah, I'll hand over to you for now. Oh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Grant. Mm -hmm. Thanks for um, putting the time and effort to uh, to put these webinars together. I, I really hope and uh, I really hope that the, 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 you, you people out there listening has, has taken some of this information to heart. And um, please also know that I, I honestly don't believe there are any other or there are many other companies doing what we're doing for you. Uh, we will hold your hand the whole step of the way. We've drawn the line in the sand. We are a value-added distributor. We will not go uh, and try and take this business uh, away from you. Um, we're here to help you get this business. So you've got Grant's details. You've got my number. You've got our sales department number. Speak to Jason. Speak to Sheridan. Speak to Grant. Let's get these things in, and uh, let's let's both let's both make some money next year. Uh, Twenty twenty-one is. No ways it's going to be worse than 2020. So, so, so let's do this together. And, and we, we'd like to be your partner. And um, we can only be your partner if you come to us and you bring us these opportunities. Let's convert them and let, let, let everyone win. Thank you very much. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Grant. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, um, folks, if we don't talk to you between now and then, have a, have a wonderful, wonderful season. Um, Enjoy your families, enjoy your time together. The travel's open again. I hope you people stay safe um, and, and um, have a good time. And we'll see you all in the new year if we don't speak to you this year. Thank you oh, for spending you. time you. with us. Thanks, Thank Greg. You. If everyone. we don't, again, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from uh, myself and Sharon. Uh, enjoy the time with everything. See you next year. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thank folks. You, and Katie, thanks for setting it all up. And thanks for being in the background. And uh, Katie's the lady that will be posting it all and uh, getting it all up onto our YouTube channel. So thank you all and have a good afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.